Hello. I've seen your nice and comfortable. Good. Welcome to this ultimate sleep clinic. You'll be here for three hours today. Um, and longer if you wish, if we're able to get you sleeping successfully. So I'll explain to you what's going to happen in today's sleep clinic. As you're already aware, you're tucked into our clinic bed. Oh nice. shortly followed by a quick medical exam. Just some of the basics to make sure that you are feeling well before we commence with the rest of the phases. We then have phase two which is all about comfort. So we look at your pillows, your blankets, we look at potentially massaging your neck and face depending on how you're feeling, just to help with the blood to flow. And then we have phase three. Let's just check. My apologies. Phase three is the scent and sensory. So the scent and sensory uh, section is all about you trying different smells and scents to help you relax, including using a special diffuser. And sensory also includes light triggers that may help you sleep and also some touch elements as well. Moving on to phase four, we have the relaxation section. This is where we try and draw your body and get you to visualize each part of your body as you relax your muscles one by one. It's a full guided relaxation and can be very effective in helping you relax. We then have phase five where we establish sounds that can help you sleep and this may include specific sound triggers, may include things like tapping, mouth sounds, and even whispering and inaudible whispers. And finally, with phase six, this is really the bedtime phase, where we'll be reading a relaxing bedtime story to you, as well as some sleepy songs and rhymes. Okay, does that sound above board and good to you? Excellent, excellent. Alrighty. So, we're going to begin with your questionnaire. It's very important that we start with this just to get a real good idea as to how you are feeling and how we can help. So, and they may be random, these questions, but they all have relevance. So I have your name and your details. Um, could you just give me your weight? It was 
as well, please. In kilograms. Okay. And your age. Okay. Perfect. Right. So, do you have a frequent coughs and colds? Yeah, just are you more prone to, you know, getting unwell with coughs, sniffles, that sort of thing? Okay. Do you smoke cigarettes? And if so, how many cigarettes do you smoke a day? Okay. Do you drink caffeinated drinks such as tea, coffee, cola? And if so, how many of these types of drinks do you drink per day? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What is your occupation? What is your main sleep problem? So this may be that you struggle to fall asleep Perhaps you struggle to stay asleep Perhaps you struggle with both Okay Mm-hmm No problem. How long have you had these sleep problems? Alright. Okay. So, how many other people sleep in the same room as you? Okay. How on average, how long does it take you to fall asleep? Okay. When you are in bed awake, do you think about A. Trying to fall to sleep B. Family matters 3. Work, college or school or 4. Anything else Okay. Do you do anything to help you get to sleep, such as relaxation exercises, counting, lying still, reading, watching TV, listening to the radio, using earplugs or other? Okay. How often do you have trouble getting to sleep? Never, less than once a month, about once a month, two to four times a month, many times a week or daily. Okay. What do you do if you can't sleep? Such as, do you get up and watch TV? Do you lie in the dark? Okay. Do you get out of bed when you cannot sleep? Do you get annoyed or angry if you cannot sleep? Before you fall asleep at night, do your legs feel achy? Do you have to move your legs about in bed? Do you have to get out of bed to ease aching legs? How often do you wake in the night? Is it never, 
less than once a month, about once a month, two to four times a month, many times a week or daily. If you normally wake during the night, how many times do you wake up during the night? How long does it usually take you to fall asleep? Is it, this is fall asleep again after you've woken up in the middle of the night? Is it a few minutes, up to half an hour, up to one hour, one to two hours or more than two hours? What do you do before getting back to sleep again? Do you go to the toilet, watch TV, that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. Do you ever sleep in unusual positions? If yes, please describe. Okay. If you sleep poorly, how does it affect you the next day? Please describe. Alright. Does a poor night's sleep make you feel depressed, anxious, irritable and tired? I would be too. Does a poor night's sleep affect your concentration, memory, or ability to work? Okay. How long would you like to sleep for each night? How long do you think normal people of your age should sleep for each night? Alright. So, next part. What time do you start getting ready for bed? time do you usually go to bed at? Mm -hmm. What time do you usually go to sleep? We all know it's very different. Yep. Okay. What time do you usually wake up? Alright. And what time do you normally get? Do you have to be woken in the morning by an alarm clock or somebody else? Do you usually wake up in the morning well rested? Do you usually wake up feeling quite tired? Do you normally wake up in a bad mood? Do you wake up in a good mood? Do you take naps during the day? If you were to have a nap, how long do you normally nap and when? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 
So the next lot of questions are just about um, some habits while you sleep. So, do you talk in your sleep that you know of? Okay. Do you walk in your sleep? Do you grind your teeth at night when you're sleeping? Do you bang head at night? Don't know, maybe you bang it off the wall. <laughs> do you know if you do quick movements of your arms or legs during sleep, such as like kicking or jumping? Do you move around a lot during sleep, like have a restless sleep? Okay. Do you bite your tongue during your sleep? Do you snore? Do you gag, choke or snort loudly during sleep? Do you seem to repeatedly stop breathing for periods of time, lasting up to 30 seconds during sleep? Do you get up to use the toilet in the night? Do you wet your bed during sleep? Do you wake up at night complaining of nightmares or frightening dreams? Have you ever woken up at night, you know, screaming in terror? Now we're gonna look at a couple of fear things. Do you fear that if you go to sleep you may die? Are you afraid of the dark? Do you have aching legs or leg cramps? Do you have a special bedtime ritual that you feel that you must do? There might be certain things in a certain order before you go to sleep. Okay. Um, do you need sleep medication? During the day, do your muscles become so weak that you fall to the ground? Upon waking or going off to sleep, feeling paralyzed, even though you're aware of your surroundings. Okay. During the day, have urges to go to sleep and can't stop yourself. Feeling drowsy during the day, but can stop yourself from sleeping. During the day, appearing more active than other people. Rolling from side to side rhythmically in sleep or while going off to sleep. Sleeping with head tipped right back. And breathing through mouth rather than nose when in sleep. Complaining of headaches on waking up. Okay. given us plenty of information to work with and assess. So just with this um, survey, as I explained before, we're going to do a quick medical exam. Is that okay? Good, good. So I'm just going to have a quick listen to your heart.
just T8 listening to your heart. I'm going to use the pulsometer, which just kind of confirms your heartbeat, but also your oxygen levels, okay? So if you can just give me your finger. just measuring just now. Okay. It's so very normal. That's 63 beats per minute and 98% oxygen saturation. So that's very good. Very good. Do you mind if I have a quick look in your ears and then I'll have a quick look in your mouth as well? And then just kind of have a quick feel of your face, okay? Right. So I'll start with your eyes really quickly before I look at your ears. Right, you just look at me.
Do you mind if you open your mouth and just have a quick look? It's just because sometimes toothache can cause people problems sleeping without them realising, so it's useful to see. No issues that I could see. Okay, I'm just going to now have a nice kind of feel around your face and just make sure that everything is feeling okay. That there's no lumps or bumps anywhere that. is your comfort face with some sleep teas and pillows and blankets for you to try. Okay, so I've set up now for the comfort section of this sleep clinic. It's going to move that there. Okay, so we are going to first of all look at creating your ideal sleep tea. So there are certain decaffeinated teas with properties that will help you relax. So I'm going to go through them and we're going to work out which one's going to be the best for you today. I have a freshly boiled um, little sort of tea jug full of hot water and I've got a glass here for you as well so we'll make you some tea it's useful to make tea this early on in the sleep clinic right. so let's go through each one and I'll list them there as well okay so this one is twinings or twinnings Okay. So this here 
is the pure chamomile. It's got the Her Majesty appointment um, logo on it. So it's pure caramel, all made with natural ingredients. So leave behind the to do lists and worries of the day and imagine them as tiny little dots swaying below as you float up and away. So, what does this taste like? Like the centre of those pretty daisy-like flowers, this is a golden infusion which is slightly sweet and floral. To drink it, you use one bag per person, pour on the boiling water and infuse for two to three minutes. Leave a little longer if you prefer a stronger taste. It's just got chamomile in it and all of the herbs are gently steamed. The process is gentle to protect the delicate taste and it was blended and packed in Hampshire. They recommend bring it for three minutes. So I'll show you what it looks like. This here's the bag. So it's just like a little Classic square tea bag. Okay. Let's put that in there. So that's the pure chamomile. Now, the next one is from the same brand. So it's twinnings, but this time it's chamomile and honey. Slightly different taste. Again, it's got her Royal Highness's logo on there. So, this one says Lie back and get comfy. Open a book you've wanted to read for a while and savour some quiet time. So, what does this taste like? Well, chamomile flowers swaying in the light breeze are a magnet for busy bees in the summer months. With just a touch of gorgeously rich honey flavour and a hint of vanilla flavour, this is a truly beautiful blend. Again, you use one bag per person, pour on the boiling water and infuse for two to three minutes. Leave longer if you'd like a stronger taste. This is a honey and vanilla flavoured chamomile infusion. So it has chamomile, natural vanilla, and honey flavourings with other natural flavourings. And all herbs are gently steamed. The process is gentle to protect their delicate taste. You can see the little chamomile flowers with the little bees. Okay, um, this looks very similar to the other one with a square pack like so. Square pack. Now we have a slightly different tea. This is a red bush. It looks like Rubois, but it's pronounced red bush. So it's nutty and slightly sweet. It's naturally caffeine free. So it's hand selected. Our farmers have been growing red bush plants in the Western Cape region for generations. They harvest these spiny plants and dry them naturally in the hot South African sun to make this distinctive bright red brew. So when you use freshly boiled water, don't reboil, and brew for three to five minutes to bring out all of the flavour. So just use one bag per person per cup and serve. Show 
these are slightly bigger bags and then that square lick smell redfish has got a lovely lovely smell to it so lovely floral colorful box. This is the Pukka Nighttime Organic Tea. A dreamy bed of oat flour, lavender, and lime flour. Naturally caffeine free. So it's fairly wild. So 25% of all the herbs used in the world and collected from the wild. So sleep well knowing this. Certified Fair Wild Blend Champions, the scheme that helps protect, protect them. So that's just like a wee protection campaign they run. So it says, sweet dreams. Nights can be long when you need peace. Here is nature's perfect path to restful nights and vibrant mornings. A gentle crush of oat flower, soothing lavender, and silky sweet lime flower. Let rest begin and sweet dreams follow. Every book of tea uses the highest grade organic herbs, each one blending her herbal wisdom delicious flavors to help you lead a fainter, happier life. You infuse for up to 15 minutes. Boiling just the water you need to help makes every cup of pukka tea as sustainable as it can be. So it's naturally caffeine free and ethically sourced. 100% organically grown ingredients so it has oat, oat flowering tops, licorice root, chamomile, lavender, lime flower, valenian root, and tulsi leaf. Now this comes like so. So it's completely packaged up and you can unpackage it and it's got like a little um, string and you can dunk it in your tea. So that's this one. Inside it says a mindful break. Our busy lives often need natural ways to find inner peace. Just as roots connect to earth, the wisdom of Ayurveda uses turmeric, ginger, and ashwagandha roots to keep us grounded. These magical organic herbs can be found in many Pukka creations, helping us to find blissfully mindful moments. And our final tea option we have today is again twining. So I'm going to put Pukka Nighttime Tea. And then Twinings. This is their Sleep Tea. Okay. So again, it has Her Majesty's symbol on there. And it's part of their Super Blends range with spiced apple, vanilla, chamomile, and passion flowers. So passion flower contributes to normal sleep. So enjoy three cups a day as part of a varied and balanced diet and healthy lifestyle. Getting a full night's sleep is the inspiration behind this carefully crafted sleep blend. This delicious blend combining chamomile, passion flowers, apple and vanilla flavorings is smooth and warming, making it a perfect part of your bedtime routine. Take your last sip and sink your head into a soft pillow. What does it 
taste like. This is a deliciously smooth and serene blend. The apple and vanilla flavorings and the chamomile bring a touch of comforting sweetness, with a dash of cinnamon, cinnamon reminiscent of apple pie with vanilla ice cream. So you use freshly boiled water, infuse the bag for at least three minutes, give the tea bag a few little stirs and a gentle squeeze to release the flavour before removing it from the cup. And it's sourced with care. Now it says passion flowers are enjoyed for their beauty as they are exotic looking plants with bright purple flowers. They are widely grown and traditionally used to support normal sleep. Vanilla is a widely used flavour that comes from little pods containing tiny black seeds. The flavour is smooth and sweet. And chamomile is a pretty daisy-like flower which creates a delicate golden infusion with a slightly sweet floral taste. A perfect smooth tasting flavour to help you wind down at the end of the day. After hearing about all of the teas we have available today, is there any particular tea that uh, pokes your interest? Yeah, the book of nighttime tea. It's a good choice. It's hard to choose. They're all so wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to make you a cup of Pukka nighttime Is this glass okay for you? this braise up to 15 minutes. I'll pop this to the side for you while we do your pillow menu and other comforting things. Okay. Pop that there. Okay. Pillow. You are actually in Sheraton duvet cover, so it's very soft cotton with a high thread count. And you also have a high thread count under sheet as well. This duvet is a 10.5 dog, so it should keep you nice and warm. So let's have a look types of pillows that may help you sleep. The first one I'm going to show you today. Sounds hard, doesn't it? This pillow is using a 1000 thread count cover with a silky touch to it and inside here is a bamboo memory foam pillow so this bamboo memory foam pillow is hard but it shapes your head so it provides that extra support if you are somebody that struggles with your neck, for 
for example, this can really help your neck. It helps it just feel a lot better. Okay? So, this is definitely always worth considering. Personally, I use memory foam. Um, I have a sore neck. And I have always had a bit of a sore neck and I used to wake up with just always a bit of tightness and feeling uncomfortable so I switched to memory foam and I find it much more comfortable and less uh, there's less aches in my neck so that's what I would recommend this pillow because even if you don't realize it could be the cause of why you wake up memory foam pillow. This here. Memory foam. Just write down, let me explain that to you. Okay. Now, this is the next pillow to show you. This is much You let it contract and you'll be able to hear that inside this pillow, this pillow is made of down. So this is a snuggle down of Norway duck feather oriental pillow. It's a white duck pillow but this one is. Now, Personally, I have had this pillow for a while as it was given to me, but I would no longer buy um, any sort of down items because I don't think it's very um, humane uh, with, with the ducks. So I personally don't buy them anymore, but they're highly, highly sought out. For comfort, so you find down in clothes and outerwear jackets for um, heat insulation, and you'll find it in your duvets and also in pillows. So this is a very soft pillow. It's very light, and it can be very comfortable for your face, your head, your neck. But it is down. Now, this pillow here that you're currently on at the moment, that is our synthetic fibre pillow. So it's a medium soft, you can get hard version as well. Um, and it's made of synthetic fibres. Yes. So there's a lot of alternatives of what you have in your pillows. Now, we look at texture. Let's start with a different shaped pillow. This has blue velvet. Very, very soft. Very soft. Okay. And this pillow is also quite hard so you'll find that if you need more support and you're more comfortable with a harder pillow this could be the one for you and it's a different shape as well some people prefer smaller pillows for them to lie on it's a good carry on pillow if you're taking this anywhere with you very soft. We also have another velvet pillow. This here. It's not as soft as that last velvet. It's sort of like a hybrid between velvet and cotton. 
out now let's see this is a larger square pillow it's a medium hardness and it is made of synthetic fibers but it's harder than the pillow that you're currently lying on okay so it's you can hear it's pretty hard there's quite a lot of give to it. Okay. A lot of give. But it's certainly a good option if you don't want something that's too soft or too hard and you like the velvety texture. And our final pillow today is the shaggy pillow <laughs> so this is soft and again it contains synthetic fibers in this one which is all good um, and it uses faux fur to create this shaggy effect so some people find this irritating on the skin Whereas others find it quite comfortable and relaxing, feeling like you're lying on fur. It's very, very soft and quite thin with lots of gifts. It's a very soft. You can just scrunch it like so. Okay. And then we're going to just show a couple more things as options for you. So this here is a very light but soft blanket. I recommend all of my clients to have because this 10.5 tog duvet can sometimes make you overheat or sometimes you can be too cold. This blanket is very light and if on very cold nights it's just enough to give you that extra heat insulation and make you feel warm and additionally when it's too warm for this it's a really comfortable weight for you to sleep in on hot days so you would sleep in this alone you would just pull back your duvet and just sleep within this blanket so there's a lot of comfort here and if you don't regulate temperature well enough, you will wake up during the night and it can be very uncomfortable waking up either with freezing cold feet or waking up in sweats because you're just too hot. And we all know that we don't get a good sleep when we're too hot. So this is a really good option to consider, okay? And finally, I'm very much for lovely snuggly hot water bottles or bean bags that you can microwave. I'll show you one of each. So I love animals. So penguins are one of my favorite animals. Um, so this here is a um, what do you call it? I would say it's a a hot bag so rather than a hot water bottle in here this I'll show you contains a little beanie bag like this see and this beanie bag is filled with special beans and lavender and you heat it in 
in the microwave for between one to two minutes and the bag completely heats up and it's very warm and you place it back inside the penguin and the whole penguin will heat up and it'll be a really comforting, homely, sort of snuggly toy that's warm and will make you feel warm and sleepy. And then we also have the hot water bottle, which is the wolf hot water bottle. As you can see here, it's got a little hot water bottle pack. What you do is you fill that with hot water from the kettle and you want to close that inside and this will completely heat up and will feel ah, lovely and warm. Okay, so that's our options there. So, can I tempt you into trying any of these options? We think would be best for you. Yes, okay, the memory foam pillow for neck support. I think that's a very good idea and I would highly recommend the Bamboo memory foam. They also have a Bamboo duvet as well that's very good. I actually use the Bamboo duvet on my own bed. Um, I think the blanket, absolutely, the blanket would be much easier um, for you to try to stop that overheating, yes. So the blanket to try. And you will try a cuddly toy, good. Okay, the hot water bottle. Okay, that makes sense. So as you won't always have a microwave so you can take it with you say if you went camping yeah you could talk, boil some water over the stove and then put that in your hot water bottle okay so we're gonna go with the hot water bottle wolf camping etc all right now your tea will be ready for you to drink so what i'll get you to do see it's now fully colourful, the colour it should be. So I'll get you to drink this up while I prepare for the next phase, phase three of this sleep clinic. Okay, here you go. How is your tea? Good, good, good. We're going on to our next section of today's sleep clinic and this is the scent and sensory section so I think you're going to enjoy this a lot. How it's going to work is I have 12 scents for you to smell and you're going to decide which scents make you feel relaxed, happy, and sleepy. We're going to add them into a special diffuser for you that has lovely lights and we'll be putting the scents around the room to see if that can help. I have a couple of other lights to show you and we're also going to look and whether touch helps you relax. All right. So, let's get started with the scents. The first scent, I'm not gonna tell you what they are until you've smelled them and let me know what you think, okay? So this is the first. Breathe in nice and deeply. And out. Okay. Yes. Okay. This 
what makes you feel snappy. Okay, this is lavender. The next one. Just again, breathe in and out. Okay, but strange. <laughs> well, this is eucalyptus, and it may feel comforting because sometimes you find it in medical products, but it has that very strange scent. Okay, I put that in there. But you felt that that was comforting. jarring. Not a fan. Okay, well that was frankincense. Okay, so did your nostrils not enjoy that? Well, that's bergamot or bergamot, however you want to pronounce it. It's a floral scent. Bergamot. And calming. Alright. Next one. Okay, you just breathe in. Well, that's because it is sweet orange. So sweet orange, you find refreshing. Okay. The next one. I can smell this from here. Makes you feel alert. Okay. That is because it is Palma Rosa. It's very, very strong. So I'll note that down on your file. Okay. The next. Again, refreshing but not as sweet as the sweet orange. Okay, that's probably because it is lemon. So I put refreshing but sharp. Yeah, sometimes lemon smells really good in things, but if it's too concentrated, like in an essential oil. Okay. 
t-shirt that is tea tree oil so you'll find this in a lot of spot products so t-shirt not very pleasant. Well that's because it's rosemary. So it's something you may find on your cooked lamb. It is not pleasant. You seem to quite like the sweet desserts. Relaxing. Okay, that was geranium. This is another floral one. Relaxing. Okay. And the next one. So breathe in. Pleasant, yeah. Refreshing and pleasant. Okay, well, that was grapefruit. Normally, the taste of grapefruit can be very sharp, but the essential oil is refreshing and pleasant. Not very nice, is it? Very bitter. That is patchouli. Okay, it's a bit of a woody smell. Um, not pleasant. I'll pop one more. Don't worry. I've still got four more to try. C-Y-P-R-E-S-S So coming Alright The next one You know what that is straight away. Peppermint. It's just too strong. Okay, that's fine. Peppermint. Very nice, isn't it? Very sweet. 
refreshing and happy. Well, that is lemon grass. It's better than the lemon one, I think. Both sweet and And the final one you have today. Yeah, it's very strong. That is sage. So that's a no. Okay. Well, that is our was 12 or was it 16? I think it was 16 different um, essential oils. So we'll just go through them. Now we want to make the perfect concoction for you. So ideally we want to have something that's sleepy, something that's calm or comforting and something refreshing or happy. Okay. So there was only one that made you feel sleepy, and that was lavender. So we put lavender in. Okay. So take that in. As for comforting, you had eucalyptus. Um, I also include calming in this. So you had eucalyptus, bergamot or bergamot, and cypress. Um, and you also had geranium as relaxing. Pick one of them. Bergamot, okay. And then you want something that's like refreshing. Um, you had grapefruit, you had sweet orange and lemon. Sweet orange. And then the only one you said made you feel happy was the lemongrass. So I feel we should add that with that. So, lavender, bergamot, sweet orange, and lemongrass. Great. Okay, I'm going to make this up for you now. So, this is filled with water. Okay. Now, we want to add three drops of lavender. Because these were sweet. Four drops of lavender. So four drops of lavender. Two drops of bergamot. One Sweet orange and one drop of lemongrass, okay? So We want the light on and we want mist. It's going to start generating mist for us. There we are. It's sort of flashing a little bit. There we are. And it's just slowly changing color.
bring that beautifulness into the atmosphere and around your bed. Smells really, really lovely and calming. this off in a moment. Okay. How do you feel? Good. Okay, good. Right. Well, I have some other light. if you find these at all relaxing. They make a nice sound. They're little bees and can act like a night light if you feel that you need it's a little bit of warm comforting light when you're trying to get to sleep.
And one of the most important ones today is called the dot dot line line game. Now, the dot dot line line game is something that is maybe a little childhood type of rhyme or something you might have experienced back then. And so I'm going to do it on you just now. So just turn over. I'm going to do it on your back. Do it three times and hopefully you feel warm and fuzzy and tingly and sleepy. Okay. So dot dot line line spiders crawling up your spine. Tight squeeze cool breeze. Crack an egg on your head and now shivers for any of these? Okay, so tell me about the eyebrow touching. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could fall asleep if someone 
um, the day was just to sit and stroke your eyebrows like that. What about your face touching like the little stroking? Mm -hmm. Do you think you could fall asleep if somebody did that? Okay. And then, what about the dot dot line line game? Firstly, did you enjoy it? Did you feel the tingles? Would that tingly feeling help you sleep, do you think? Okay. There's other touch um, techniques as well that can be done. There's the touch sequence, we call it here, where um, you can use Reiki techniques to uh, move energy through the body, but it's in a kind of touch form, and people find that very relaxing as well. So there is lots of options for you to explore, should you wish to um, find techniques relaxing. So we're going to move on to our phase four of the sleep clinic which is full body relaxation. We will be doing some breathing work along with drawing your body and relaxing every single part of your body and shading it in as we do it on a body map. Okay? So that's what we're going to move on to now. Okay, so our next phase of the sleep clinic that we're moving on to is phase four, as I explained, with your full body relaxation. And we're going to be drawing your body and we're going to relax your entire body. You're going to feel wonderful, okay? So it's really important that you listen to me. You don't have to watch me. You can close your eyes. But just listen and do as I say, alright? So we're going to begin with some deep breaths to just really oh, relax the soul. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. And breathe in and out. completely relaxed. So just keep up with your deep breaths in and out, in and out, okay? So I'm just going to trace your body just now, just an outline. than others. <laughs> it's just to emphasize each individual part of you so that we can make sure we relax the whole thing. Alright, so we're going to start with your feet. So 
So I'd like you, if you could please, just think about your toes. Have a little wiggle of your toes if you would like to. And I want you to say sweet dreams to your toes. It's time for them to go to sleep. We're just going to colour it. Your toes. They've shaded into darkness because they've now gone to sleep. We're gonna move up to the soles of your feet. Let's move this out of your way. There we are. Um, the soles of your feet. If you curl your toes, you will feel soles of your feet, muscles contract. So I want you to just acknowledge the soles of your feet and the work that they've done today and also the tops of your feet as well. I want you to say good night to your feet. Good night feet. Let's shade them out. Shading out the left and shading out the right. All gone to sleep. Okay. Next, we're going to move up to your ankles. Your ankles have done a lot of work today for you. If you flex your feet, you will feel your ankles contract. So I want you to say night night to your ankles. It's time to relax and go to sleep. Night night ankles. So I'm just going to shade out your ankles because they have gone to sleep. Now we're going to move up to your shins and also the backs of your legs. If you flex your, your feet up the way, you will feel your shin muscles contract as well. muscles that have a lot of strength and also need their rest just as much as you do so we want to say thank you so much 
but now it's time to go to bed. Sweet dreams to your thighs. Night night. Thank you. Okay. So we'll shade out the left thigh and we'll shade out the right. Sweet dreams. We're moving on to your pelvis and also your bottom. So the tops of your glutes, your gluteus and medius, minimus and maximus, and also all your hip flexors as well. They have been involved in walking and sitting, standing, even lying down. So thank you for all of the support provided today to your pelvis. Sweet dreams, have a lovely sleep. It's time to say goodnight. Night night. I'm just gonna shade out your pelvis. Shade, shade, shade all the way out. There we are. Completely shaded out. Alright. We're going to move up now to your lower abdomen, which contains your abdominal muscles, but also your stomach and intestines. We want to say thank you for everything they've done today. Obviously, your stomach and your intestines will still move and do what they need to do while you're sleeping, but we'd like your abdominal muscles to relax and go to sleep. So we're going to say good night your abdominal muscles. Thank you for helping me sit up, helping you move, keeping your posture. Thanks for all the work they've done today, but it's time for them to go to sleep. Sweet dreams. And we're just going to shade in this lower going to move up now to your chest area. So your chest, it has obviously muscles on the surface, but it has the biggest muscle, which is your heart, the most important muscle in your body. Um, it also has your lungs and your intercostal muscles help you expand and collapse your ribcage, allowing the lungs to fill with oxygen. So all of these things are very important and need to continue doing what they need to do. But we want your chest in general to just relax and those muscles to get deeper and deeper and get into a state of relaxation where you can fall asleep. So we're going to say good night to your muscles. Good night to your chest. Thank you, chest, for everything that you've done today. Okay. You've done amazing work. You help me move. You help posture. Thank you very much for your support. But we're just going to now shade from your lower abdomen up to just below your neck, okay? Because they're now, it's now gone to sleep. shoulders have your, you've got your glenohumeral joint um, and you've got a lot of muscles and innervation that help that joint move and also hold um, stability in those areas. So you have your rotator cuff, including muscles like your deltoid and your rhombus 
and you have really important innervation through there, something called the brachial plexus, which intertwines all of your cranial nerves, um, down your arm, which allows uh, arm innervation, and it's also got a way back up mechanism in case you were to damage a nerve. Um, but your shoulders in particular are very heavily involved during the day with things that you have to do. So, um, they work really hard, and it's time for them to just drift off and go to sleep. So we're going to say goodnight to your shoulders. Sweet dreams to your shoulders. We're going to call out in the left one first. And then we're going to go to your biceps and triceps. Again, you can flex and fill your gums. And we want to say goodnight to these muscles. These muscles have worked really hard with your gripping and your moving and whatnot. So we want to say goodnight to those muscles and allow them to have a really good night's sleep. So we'll say sweet dreams to your muscles. Have a really nice And shade out your left bicep and tricep, so essentially your upper arm above your elbow and your left tricep and bicep. And we're going to say good night. Sweet dreams. So we're going to move now onto your elbows and your elbows really help you move your lower arm so if you were to curl your arm like this you would feel the muscles involved in that movement so we're going to say thank you very much sorry we have a little dog in the clinic today who gurns that's her gurning because she itches herself and she groans because she will scratch herself by accident. You think she would learn, but she doesn't. Anyway, um, we've got the elbows, so we're just going to say sweet dreams to the elbows. Thank you for everything that they've done today. Night night, elbows. So we're going to colour in your left one, and then your right. Sweet dreams. Your body's getting there. There's a lot of parts of your body now that are very much asleep, as you can see. So, they are getting there. So we're going to move to the lower arms above your wrist, okay? So we want to, you can flex, if you flex your hand, the tops of your arm, you will feel the muscles move and contract and strain potentially and if you go the other way, you can feel this side. So we want to say goodnight to your lower arms. Thank you for everything that they've done today with moving, gripping, just being overall very cool. But it's time for them to relax and go to sleep. Sweet dreams. We're just going to colour the left one and then we're going to colour the right one. Sweet dreams to your arms. Okay. And we're going to look at your wrists so you can just swirl your wrists like so like this and you will feel the muscles involved in the mobility of your wrists and you can feel them just contract. So I'd like you to thank your wrists and let them know that you've had a fab day with them but it's time for them 
to relax and go to sleep. So, sweet dreams to your wrists. So, we're going to color in the left one first, and then we're going to color in the right one. And then we're going to move to your hands and your fingers So you will feel most of all if you were to bring your hands into a fist You will feel all of your fingers contract as well as the palm of your hand So your hands have been essential to your abilities today to be able to do things So we want to really thank them let them have a very good rest. So sweet dreams to your hands and your little fingers. Have a good sleep. So we're going to colour in the left thumb, the left index finger, the left middle finger, the left ring finger, and the left pinky. Now, here, are you wanting to relax too? Then you come up this way then. This way, look. This way. There you go. You come up here then. Okay, you don't annoy the client. Let it lie down. Lie down. Okay. So we've got a dog here that's going to help you sleep too. You want to relax? She won't try and eat your this. I will. Okay, I see you. And then we're going to colour in your right thumb, your right index finger, your right middle finger, your right ring finger, and your right pinky. Sweet dreams. Thank you for everything that you've done today. Sorry, I've got a dog that's uh, decided it's time to play and bite me. You need to sleep as well. That's a good girl. Good girl. Okay, so we're now going to move up your neck. So if you bend your neck forward, you'll feel the muscles tightening. Perhaps if you have a sore neck like me, you will very much feel your traps, your trapezius muscles, and some of your spinal muscles as well. And if you bend your neck backwards, you will feel the muscles at the front contract as well, okay? So, we want to say thank you to your neck for holding the fort today, keeping your head nice and steady and up there, held up high on top of your body. And we're going to say sweet dreams to your neck. Night, night, neck. And I'm just going to colour your neck in all the way up. Under your chin. Now, we want to say good night to the lower half of your facial muscles. So if you give a really big smile, you'll feel all of these facial muscles contract. Okay? So, we want to say thank you for being able to help you express emotion today. And it's time for the your face. I'm just going to colour halfway up your face, okay? And then we next want to say goodnight to your ears. Okay? So, your ears have been doing a lot of listening and 
they're still gonna listen while you're sleeping but we want them to drown out the noise and be able to allow you some peaceful relaxation time so we're gonna say night night to your ears thank you for everything you've done today sweet dreams ears we're gonna color your left ear in and then your right ear sweet dreams And then we're going to move to your top of your head and the facial muscles surrounding the top of your head. So these muscles can be activated by surprise look, shutting your eyes really tight. We're going to say good night to the top of your face. Sweet dreams. Okay, it's time for you to go to sleep. Just gonna color almost all the way up to the top because the last place we want to think about is your mind. And your mind may be full of thoughts from the week. It may be full of thoughts from work stress, family, situations, can be anything. So we want to try and relax your mind because if your body is fully relaxed but your mind is not, then, you know, you're not going to get to sleep. So, you're going to release your stress Release your stress. Let your stress just fade, fade away. Release your stress. Release your stress. Release your stress. You do not need to stress. You do not need be stressed, you can let it go. There's time. You always have time. Even if you think you don't, you do. This is your time. It's not time for other tasks. It's not time for work. It's not time for thinking about the future. It's time to live in the present and have your time to relax and sleep. Nothing else matters apart from you and your rest. So relax. Get rid of all of your stress. And I want you to get rid of any anxiety you're holding, any anxiety from fear of stuff that's going to happen soon or just general anxiousness. We want to say goodbye to that just now because there's no need to be anxious. You're safe. You're in your bed. You're warm. You're loved and cared for. And the only important thing right now is that you get a really good night sleep. So we're going to say goodnight. your anxiousness. It's not welcome. It's got to go away. And you've got to relax. And we're going to say goodnight to any form of sad or depressive feelings that you may be experiencing. They can go away because they're not welcome here because it's your turn to be able to be happy and free and not feel sad. It's your time to relax and to just know that you're safe and loved and cared for and warm and that you don't need to worry. You don't need to feel sad. Nothing matters apart from you at this present time and the fact that you need to go to sleep and have a really wonderful, peaceful sleep. 
you're gonna see some dreams, sweet dreams to any ill, depressive adults. And on that topic, any anger that you've been holding during the day, we're also gonna tell that to go away. It doesn't matter if you feel annoyed about a situation or angry about something, that doesn't matter at the moment. Those thoughts are only gonna make you feel bad. So this is your time. It's time for you to relax and go to sleep. So good night to all of the things that are keeping you awake. Sweet dreams. So we're just going to fill the last section on your head, which is your mind. And let your mind fully relax. So as you can see, Your full body is now coloured in. Your full body should be in a really deep state of relaxation. Really deep state. It's time for you to relax. It's time for you to free from any negative feelings. Okay, so we're going to move on now to phase five, which is all about sound. going to move on to one of my favourite parts of the sleep clinic, which is all about sound. That's right, different sounds that you may find relaxing. We're going to test them out on you. There's different items, there's things like tapping, mouth sounds, whispers, just to really see what you find tingly and relaxing. So I'm going to bring myself a little bit closer to you. There we are. Okay. Our first item is something that simulates the sea. Makes you feel like you're on holiday, somewhere warm and sunny. It's called the wave bag. That's the wave bag. You can also use it if you've got like a sore neck. You can sit it, put it around your neck. Um, if you heat it in the microwave, it heats the little beads up, so it's really good. Okay, so, right. Did you find that tingly or not tingly? One is a box of glass pins and they make a really nice sound.
lots of different colored pins. Very relaxing. Did you find the pin that sounds relaxing? Either or, it doesn't need to give you the tingles, but it can make you feel like relaxed. Okay. This is our next item, which is a cheerleader bowl with my name on it. I'm just going to scratch this. sand banana Do you find the sand banana tingly or relaxing or neither? Okay. We now have this, which is a face mask full of plastic beads and balls. Do you find this plastic bag tingly, relaxing, or neither? Okay. Next, 
we have the Tingle Sharks, the Herbaber Sharks, that are known to make you feel tingly in the left. Do you find the tangle sharks tangly at all? Okay. Here's the hat Moving on to the stress ball. Do you find the stress balls tingly or not tingly? Did you find the blue crunchy balls tingly or not? Okay. We're now going to go for the jelly banana. The same three liquid inside.
Can you find the jelly, banana, tingly or not? Duster, tingly or not tingly. Okay. We've next got the high school. is your thought on the ice globes. Okay. Perfect. And we have pink rock salt for some extra crunch. was a lot doggy has just pushed herself back into the clinic 
Hill. I'm in the middle of doing a sound test. Okay, you can come back up if you want. There you go. Come on in. And come on. Here she comes. Doggy is back. Say hi, Doggy. Start stand. She's just the edge. Okay, our next one. I know we've done some tapping. Um, already in amongst the other triggers, but we're gonna do specifically tapping. Okay, on this. How do you feel about tapping? Is it tingly or not tingly? The next is I'm going to do a mouth sound. So I'm going to start with tongue swirling. You need to let me know if you find it tingly or not. Okay. Do you find tingling or not tingling? We're going to do kisses. Kisses tingly or not tingly? The next one.
the use of the word get up tingly or not tingly okay we're gonna do some audible and audible whispering so this is where it's whispers but it's inaudible to see whether you find this whispering tingly or not tingly okay great well that brings us to the end of phase five with your assigned task and that's a really good goal that we've built up for you so we're going to move on to your final phase which is your bedtime phase and this is where we're going to read the bedtime story to you and some rhymes so we're moving on to our final section now, which is bedtime stories. So I've just got a cup of tea here as well. <laughs> Mainly so that I don't fall asleep while I read you a bedtime story. So today's bedtime story I've selected for you is an excerpt from a book called Heidi. So we're going to read this together and if we have time we're going to do some bedtime lullabies as well and our poems you may call them. Okay, so get nice and comfortable and I will read this to you. As soon as deep disappeared. The old man went back to his bench, and there he remained seated, 
steering on the ground without uttering a sound, while thick curls of smoke floated upwards from his pipe. Heidi, meanwhile, was enjoying herself in her new surroundings. She looked about till she found a shed, built against the hut, where the goats were kept. She peeped in and saw that it was empty. She continued her search and presently came to the fir trees behind the hut. A strong breeze was blowing through them, and there was a rushing and roaring in their topmost branches. Heidi stood still and listened. The sound growing fainter, she went on again to the farther corner of the hut, and so round to where her grandfather was sitting. Seeing that he was in exactly the same position as when she left him, she went and placed herself in front of the old man and putting her hands behind her back, stood and gazed at him. Her grandfather looked up, and as she continued standing there without moving, What is it you want? he asked. I want to see what you have inside that house, said Heidi. Come then, said the grandfather, and rose and went before her towards the Bring your bundle of clothes in with you, he bid her, as she was following. I shan't want them any more, was her prompt answer. The old man turned and looked searchingly at the child, whose eyes were sparkling in delighted anticipation of what she was going to see inside. She is certainly not wanting in, in intelligence, he murmured to himself. And why shall you not want them any more? He asked aloud, because I want to go about like the goats with their thin light legs. Well, you can do so if you like, said her grandfather, but bring the things in, we must put them in the cupboard. Heidi did as she was told. The old man now opened the door and Heidi stepped inside after him. She found herself in a good sized room, which covered the whole ground floor of the hut. A table and a chair were the only furniture. In one corner stood the grandfather's bed. In another was the earth, with a large kettle hanging above it. And on the furthest side was a large door in the wall. This was the cupboard. The grandfather opened it. Inside were his clothes, some hanging up, others a couple of shirts and some socks and handkerchiefs lying on a shelf. On a second shelf were some plates and cups and glasses, and on a higher one still, a round loaf, smoked meat and cheese for everything that um, uncle needed, for his food, and clothing was kept in this cupboard. Heidi, as soon as it was opened, ran quickly forward and thrust in her bundle of clothes, as far back behind her grandfather's things as possible, so that they might not easily be found again. She then looked carefully around the room and asked, Where am I to sleep, Grandfather? Wherever you like, he answered. Heidi was delighted and began at once to examine all the nooks and corners to find out where it would be the pleasantest to sleep. In the corner near her grandfather's bed, she saw a short, short ladder against the wall. Up she climbed and found herself in the halo. There lay a large heap of fresh, sweet-smelling hay, while through a round wind on the wall, she could see right down the valley. I shall sleep up here, Grandfather, she called down to him. It's lovely up here. Come up and see how lovely it is. Oh, I know all about it, she called up in an answer. I am getting the bed ready now, she called down again, as she went busily to and fro her work. But I shall want you to bring me up a sheet. You can't have a bed without a sheet. You want it to lie upon. All right, said the grandfather. And presently he went to the cupboard. And after rummaging about inside for a few minutes, he drew out a long, coarse piece of stuff, which was all he had to do, duty for a sheet. He carried it up to the loft, where he found Heidi had already made quite a nice bed. She put an extra heap of hay at one end for a pillow, and had so arranged it that when in bed she'd be able to see comfortably 
out through the round window. That is capital, said her grandfather. Now you must put on the sheet, but wait a moment first. He went and fetched another large bundle of hay to make the bed thicker, so that the child should not feel the hard floor under her. There, now bring it here. Heidi had got a hold of the sheet, but it was almost too heavy for her to carry. This was a good thing, however, as the close, thick stuff would prevent the sharp stalks of the hay running through and pricking her. The two together now spread the sheet over the bed, and where it was too long or too broad, Heidi quickly tucked it under the hay. It looked now as tidy and as comfortable as a bed as you could wish for, and Heidi stood gazing thoughtfully at her handiwork. We have forgotten something now, Grandfather, she said. What's that? he asked. A coverlid. When you get into bed, you have to creep in between the sheets and the coverlid. Oh, that's the way, is it? But suppose I have not got a coverlid, said the old man. Well, never mind, rather, Grandfather, said Heidi, in a consoling tone of voice. I can take some more hay to put over me she was turning quickly to fetch another armful from the heap when her grandfather stopped her. Wait a moment, he said, and he climbed down the ladder again and went towards his bed. He returned to the loft with a large, thick sack made of flax, which he threw down, exclaiming, There, that is better than hay, is it not? Heidi began tugging away at the sack with all of her little might. In her efforts to get it smooth and straight, but her small hands were not fitted for the heavier job. Her grandfather came to her assistance, and when they had got it tidily spread over the bed, it all looked so nice and warm and comfortable that Heidi stood gazing at it in delight. That's a splendid coverlid, she said, and the bed looks lovely altogether. I wish it was night so that I might get inside at once. I think we might have something to eat first, said grandfather. What do you think? Heidi, in the excitement of bed-making, had forgotten everything else, but now she began to think about food, she felt terribly hungry, for she had had nothing to eat since a piece of bread and a little cup of thin coffee that had been her breakfast early that morning, before starting her long, hot journey. So she answered without hesitation, Yes, I think so too. Let us go down then, as we both think alike, said the old man, and he followed the child down the ladder. Then he went up to the hearth, pushed the big kettle aside, and drew forward the little one that was hanging on the chain, and seating himself on the round-topped three-legged stool before the fire, blew it up into a clear bright flame. The kettle soon began to boil, and meanwhile the old man held a large piece of cheese on a long iron fork over the fire turning it round and round till it was toasted in a nice golden yellow colour on each side. Heidi watched all that was going on with eager curiosity. Suddenly, some new ideas seemed to come into her head, for she turned and ran towards the cupboard, and then began going busily backwards and forwards. Presently the grandfather got up and came to the table with the jug and the cheese, and there he saw it all ready, tidily laid with the round loaf and two plates, and two knives each in its right place. For Heidi had taken exact note that morning of all there was in the cupboard, and she knew which things would be wanted for their meal. Ah, that's right, said the grandfather. I am glad to see that you have some ideas of your own. And as he spoke, he laid the toasted cheese on a layer of bread. But there is still something missing. Heidi looked at the jug that was steaming away invitingly and ran back to the cupboard. At first she could only see a small bowl left on the shelf, but she was not long in perplexity. For a moment later she caught sight of two glasses further back, and without an instant's loss of time she returned with these and the bowl and put them down on the table. Good. I see you know how to set about things, but what will you do for this eat? The grandfather himself was sitting in an only chair in the room. Heidi flew to the hair and dragging the three-legged stool up to the table, sat herself down upon it. Well, you've managed to find a seat for yourself, I see, only a rather 
no one, I'm afraid, said the grandfather. But you would not be tall enough to reach the table, even if you sat on my chair. The first thing now, however, is to have something to eat, so come along. With that, he stood up, filled the bowl with milk, and placing it on the chair, pushed it in front of Heidi on her little three-legged stool, so that she now had a table to herself. Then he brought her a large slice of bread and a piece of the golden cheese and took her to eat. After which he went and sat down on the corner of the table and began his own meal. Heidi lifted the bowl with her hands and drank without pause till it was empty. For all the thirst of her long hot journey had returned upon her. She then drew in a deep breath in the eagerness of her thirst. She had not stopped to breathe and put down the bowl. Was the milk nice? asked her grandfather. I never drank any so good before, answered Heidi. Then you must have some more. And the old man filled her bowl again to the brim and set it before the child, who was now hungrily beginning her bread, having first spread it with the cheese, which, after being toasted, was soft as butter. The two together tasted deliciously, and the child looked to the picture of content as she sat eating, and at intervals taking further draughts of milk. The mill being over, the grandfather went outside to put the goat shed in order, and Heidi watched with interest while he first swept it out, then put fresh straw for the goats to sleep upon. Then he went to the little well shed, and there he cut some long round sticks and a small round board. In this he bored some holes and stuck the sticks into them. And there, as if made by magic, was a three-legged stool, just like her grandfather's only higher. Heidi stood and looked at it speechless, speechless with astonishment. What do you think that is? asked her grandfather. It's my stool, I know, because it's such a high one. And it was made all of a minute, said the child, still lost in wonder and admiration. She understands what she sees. Her eyes are in the right place, remarked the grandfather to himself, as he continued his way round the hut, knocking in a nail here and there, or making fast some part of the door, and so with hammer and nails and pieces of wood going from spot to spot, mending or cleaning away whatever work the kind was needed. Heidi followed him step by step, her eyes attentively taking in all that he did, and everything that she saw was a fresh source of pleasure to her. And so the time passed happily on to evening. Then the wind began to roar louder than ever through the old fir trees. Heidi listened with delight to the sound and it filled her heart so full of gladness that she skipped and danced round to the old trees, as if some unheard of joy had come to her. The grandfather stood and watched her from the shed. Suddenly, a shrill whistle was heard. Heidi paused in her dancing, and the grandfather came out. Down from the heights above the goats came springing one after another, with Peter in their midst. Heidi sprang forward with a cry of joy and rushed among the flock, greeting first one, then another of her old friends of the morning. As they neared the hut, the goats stood still, and then two of their number, two beautiful slender animals, one white and one brown, ran forward to where the grandfather was standing and began licking his hands, for he was holding a little salt, which he always had ready for his goats on their return home. Peter disappeared with the remainder of the flock. Heidi tenderly strode the two goats in turn, running first to one side of them and then the other, and jumping about in her glee at the pretty little animals. Are they ours, Grandfather? Are they both ours? Are you going to put them in the shed? Will they always come and stay with us? Heidi's questions came tumbling out one after the other, so that her grandfather had only time to answer each one with yes. Yes. When the goats had finished licking up the salt, her grandfather told her to go and fetch her bowl and the bread. 
idea bait and was soon back again. The grandfather milked the white goat and filled her basin and then breaking off a piece of bread. Now eat your supper, he said, and then go up to bed. Cousin Deet left another little bundle for you with a nightgown and some other small things in it, which you will find at the bottom of the cupboard if you want them. I must go and shut up the goats, so be off and sleep well. Good night, Grandfather, good night. What are their names, Grandfather? What are their names? She called out as she ran after his retreating figure and the goats. The white one is named Little Swan, and the brown one is Little Bear, he said. Good night, Little Swan. Good night, Little Bear, she called again at the top of her voice, for they were already inside the shed. Then she sat down on the seat and began to eat and drink. But the wind was so strong that it almost blew her away. So she made haste and finished her supper and then went indoors and climbed up to her bed where she was soon lying as sweetly and soundly asleep as any young princess on her couch of silk. Not long after, and while it was still twilight, the grandfather also went to bed, for he was up every morning at sunrise, and the sun came climbing up over the mountains at a very early hour during these summer months. The wind grew so temptuous during the night and blew in such gusts against the walls that the hut trembled and the old beams groaned and creaked. It came howling and wailing down the chimney like voices of those in pain and it raged with such fury among the old fir trees that here and there a branch was snapped and fell. In the middle of the night the old man got up. The child will be frightened, he murmured half aloud. He mounted the ladder and went and stood by the child's bed. Outside, the moon was struggling with the dark. Fast driving clouds, which at one moment left it clear and shining, and the next swept over it, and all again was dark. Just now, the moonlight was falling through the round window straight on to Heidi's bed. She lay under the heavy coverlid, her cheeks rosy with sleep her head peacefully resting on her little round arm, and with a happy expression on her baby face, as if dreaming of something pleasant. The old man stood looking down on the sleeping child until the moon again disappeared behind the clouds, and he could see no more, and then he went back to bed. The end. So... There's a little poem here called From Bacchanalia that I'll read to you as well. The evening comes, the fields are still, the tinkle of the thirsty mill, unheard all day, ascends again. Deserted is the half moon plain, silent the swaths, the ringing. The mowers cry, the dogs alarms, all housed within the sleeping farms. The business of the day is done, the last left haymaker is gone, and from the thyme upon the height, and from the elder blossom white, and pale dog roses in the hedge, and from the mint plant in the sedge. Puffs of balm the night air blows, the perfume which the day forgoes, and on the pure horizon far, see pulsing with the firstborn star, the liquid sky above the hill, the evening comes, the fields are still, loitering and leaping with saunter with bounds, flickering and circling. In files and in rounds, gaily their pine, daft green, tossing in the air, loose o'er their shoulders white, showering their hair. See the wild menace break from the wood, youth and hideous, maddening their blood. 
see through the quiet land, rioting they pass, fling the fresh heaps about, trample the grass, tear from the rifled hedge, garlands their prize, fill with the sports the field, fill with their cries. Shepherd, what ails thee then? Shepherd, why mute? Forth with thy joyous song, forth with thy flute. Tense not the revel blithe, lure not their cries. Glow not their shoulders smooth, melt not their eyes. Is not on cheeks like those lovely the blush? Ah, so the quiet was, so was the hush. We have this one from Amanda. Sleepy, my dear? Yes, yes, I see. Morpheus is falling in love with thee. Morpheus, my worst of rivals, strives to draw the curtains off thine eyes and fans him with his wing asleep. Makes drowsy love play at to peep. How prettily his feathers blow, those fleshy shuttings to and fro. Oh, how he makes me tantalize. With those fair apples of thine eyes, equivocates and cheats me still, opening and shutting at his will. Now both now one the doting god plays with thine eyes at even and odd. My stammering tongue doubts which it might, but thee good morrow or good night. So thy eyes twinkle brighter far than the bright trembling evening star. So a wax taper burnt within, the socket plays at out and in. And then there's night, the sun descending in the west, the evening star does shine, the birds are silent in their nest, and I must seek for mine. The men like a flower in heaven's high bower, with silent delight. Sits and smiles on the night. Farewell, green fields and happy groves, where flocks of took delight, where lambs have nippled silent moves, the feet of angels bright. Unseen they pour blessing and joy without ceasing on each bud and blossom and each sleeping blossom. They look in their every thoughtless nest, where birds are covered. They visit caves of every beast to keep them all from harm. If they see any weeping that should have been sleeping, they pour sleep on their head and sit down by their bed. When wolves and tigers howl for prey, they pitying stand and weep, seeking to drive their thirst away and keep them from the sheep. But if they rush dreadful, the angels most hateful receive each mild spirit new worlds to an and there the lion's ruddy eyes shall flow with tears of gold, and pitying the tender cries, and walking round the fold, saying a wrath by his meekness, and by his health sickness, is driven away from our immortal day. And now beside thee, bleating lamb, I can lie down and sleep, or think on him who bore thy name, graze after thee and weep, or washed in this river, bright mane forever shall shine like the gold as I guard o'er the fold. And then we have Winken, Blinken and Nod. Winken, Blinken and Nod one night sailed off in a wooden shoe. Sailed on a river of crystal light into a sea of dew. Where are you going, and what do you wish? The old men asked the three. We have come to fish for herring fish that live in this beautiful sea. Nets of silver and gold have we, said Winken, Blinken, and Nod. The old men laughed and sang a song as they rocked in a wooden shoe, and the wind that sped them all night long ruffled at the waves of dew. The little stars were the herring fish that lived in the beautiful sea. 
uh, cast your nets wherever you wish, never afraid are we. So cried the stars to the fishermen three, Wynken, Blinken, and Nod. All night long their nets they threw to the stars in the twinkling foam. Then down from the skies came the wooden shoe, bringing the fishermen home. Twas all so pretty a sail it seemed, as if it could not be. And some folk thought twas a dream they dreamed. Of sailing that beautiful sea, but I shall name you the fishermen three, Wynken, Blinken, and Nod. Wynken and Blinken are two little eyes, and Nod is a little head, and the wooden shoe that sailed the skies is a wee one's trundle the bed. So shut your eyes while mother sings of wonderful sights that be, and you shall see the beautiful things that you rock on the misty sea, where the old shoe rocked the fishermen three, Wynken. To sleep. It's just one page. Yep. A flock of sheep that leisurely pass by, one after one, the sound of rain and bees, murmuring, the fall of rivers, winds and seas, smooth fields, white sheets of water and pure sky. I've thought of all by turns and still I lie, sleepless. And soon the small bird's melodies must hear first uttered from my orchid trees, and the first cuckoo's melancholy cry. Even thus last night and two nights more I lay, and could not win the sleep by any stealth, so do not let me wear tonight away. Without thee, what is all the morning spell? Come, blessed barrier between day and day, dear mother of fresh thoughts. We have my absolute favourite one called The Moon Song. So I'm going to read this to you now. Zin, zin, cuddle and grin over the crinkling sea. The moon man flings him a silvered net, fashioned of moonbeams three. And some folk say, when the net lies long, and the midnight hour is ripe, the moon man fishes for some old song that fell from a sailor's pipe. And some folk say that he fishes the bars down where the dead ships lie, looking for lost little baby stars that slid from slippery sky. And the waves roll out, and the waves roll in. And the nodding night wind blows. But why the moon man fishes the sea, only the moon man knows. Zoom, zoom, net of the moon rides on the wrinkling sea. Bright is the fret and shining wet, fashioned of moonbeams three. And some folk say when the great net gleams and the waves are a dusky blue, the moon man fishes for two little. And some folk say in the late night hours, while the long thin shadows slide, the moon man fishes for cold sea flowers under the tumbling tide. And the waves roll out, and the waves roll in, and the grey gulls dip and doze. But why the moon man fishes the sea, only the moon man knows. Soon, soon, cuddle and grin. Over the crinkling sea, the moon man flings him a silvered net, fashioned of moonbeams three. And some folk say that he follows the flecks down where the last light flows, fishing for two round gold-rimmed specks that blare from his button-like nose. And some folk say while the salt sea foams and the silver net lines snare. Moon man fishes for carbon combs that float from the mermaid's hair. And the waves roll out and the waves roll in when the nodding night wind blows. But why the moon man fishes the sea? Only the moon man These were our bedtime stories.
stories and poems. Did you enjoy the bedtime story and the poems? enjoyed being here. We've absolutely enjoyed having you here. It's been a pleasure. And I really hope to be able to help you, help you sleep. That's my ultimate goal. Well, I better leave you to sleep. Just give me nice and top.